Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for week six of the Parables of Jesus. I'm Pastor David, and we are doing the family devotions of our, our sermon this past week and going through this week, the Good Samaritan. So if you're new to Bethel or you're new to checking us out here uh, with our family devotions, um, we do this every week or just about every week. There are some weeks that we miss. Uh, go ahead and lick lick no don't lick anything that's bad <laughs> click on the like button or subscribe to our channel to get updated on our sermons that come out each week uh, from our sunday morning service to our wednesday night bible study when that kicks off uh, coming up in september and our devotions that we have on thursday that come out around six o'clock so go ahead and do that. You can do that right now. You wait to the end. That's fine with me. But this evening, we are talking about the Good Samaritan, a story that a lot of us have heard. Like if you've been growing up in the church, you've heard it a lot. Uh, if you're new to church and you're new to Christianity, maybe you've heard it a couple of times or even if you're not, uh, you've maybe heard about, oh, that person was a Good Samaritan. It's part of our culture now. But we went over that on Sunday about what it means to be a good Samaritan, why Jesus was using the Samaritan to, to illustrate his point. Uh, there, there was major problems and division between the Jews and the Samaritans. The Samaritans weren't doing things according to the way the, the Old Testament had prescribed it, uh, they had told them to do it. They were the offshoot. They were... Maybe you would call them the redheaded stepchild. They were the outcast. Uh, and even more so to the point where they just hated each other. So when you have where Jesus started off uh, a lawyer, a person that knew the law, and not just the law that we know today, the Constitution or the laws and rules of our, our town, but knew the Bible, asking Jesus these questions, Jesus was putting it back to him, putting it back to him and saying, look, what, what does the law say about going being saved? What does the law say about being right before God? And, and he answered it correctly. And this, this lawyer said, well, who's my neighbor? And the Bible is very clear that he, he asked this question to justify himself. And we do that so often, don't we? When we want to make it, we want to make what we're doing right. We don't want to be wrong. We don't want to be like just not right in what we do. We want to make it right. Even if we think it's wrong, even if we know it's wrong, we still want to make it like it's right for us. So we'll try to justify ourselves. We'll try to say, well, it's okay in these circumstances. It's okay when, well, they did such and such to me. And that will make me right. And I'll feel okay about myself. But Jesus wasn't having any of that. And he, he tells him this parable, this story, to illustrate his point. And the hero of it was the guy's worst enemy, was a person that he thought so low, so lowly of. And yet that good Samaritan acted in such a right way, treating that person that, that got beat up and left for dead. And Jesus at the end said, well, who was the who was the neighbor to the man that was beat and left for dead out of the three, out of the, the Levite, the Pharisee, and the Good Samaritan? Who was the true neighbor? And the lawyer couldn't even say the Samaritan. He didn't even say the Samaritan. He said the one who showed mercy to that man. Wow. But here's the thing. We don't just do this 
naturally. You don't go past somebody that you hate and despise and help them unless you've already put it inside of you. Unless you've already said to yourself, if I'm put in that situation, this is what I'm going to do. That's what the Samaritan had done already. He had already told himself. He had already made it a standard for himself. And if I pass somebody, no matter who it is, I'm going to help them. So what about us? As Christians, the Bible calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. The Bible calls us to love and pray for those who persecute us. Love our enemies. So where does that lead us? Where does that lead us to, to help even the ones that we don't like, even the ones that are opposite of who we are and opposite of, of what we hold dear and right? Where does that leave me if I come across a situation like that? How am I going to treat them? Am I going to walk on the opposite side and not help them? not treat them like a human being, not show them the respect and help that they need. But that's the question. That is the question for all of us. When push comes to shove, when we are put in that situation, what have all the things leading up to that moment helped us to do in the moment. Makes you think, doesn't it? What are all the things that we have done, that we have allowed in, that we've put in our minds, that we have put in ourselves, allowed in from other people, going to do to either help us be the person we need to be and God has called us to be or given to our natural way of doing things, walking across the street and leaving them. So guys, I hope that this has been a great time. I hope that you get a lot out of this. And really, I hope that you talk about it, that you, you ask those tough questions of yourself, of, of your kids, how are you going to handle it? What are you doing to make that right in your life? So guys, I hope that you have a great night. I hope you have a great rest of your, your week and weekend. And I hope to see you again. I'll see you later. Bye.